Today, we're going to talk about two different ideas. Number one is the source of your thoughts. And number two, where to turn for increase. So let's go ahead and dive into this. As mentioned previously, you are the master of your ship. You are in control of your thoughts. There are primarily two sources of thoughts that you have access to. One is through your flesh, through the carnal nature, one of pleasure, passions, physical sensations. And the second one is from the divine nature. That's from your inner core, from your spiritual core that are fruits of the spirit joy, peace, rejoicing, love, compassion, service, etc. So the father of all lies, he gets power over the children of men with two means. Number one is through false traditions of the forefathers. And number two is obvious disobedience. In both cases, it's disobedience, essentially. The forefathers taught their younger children to disobey by teaching them something that wasn't true. And or the younger one simply chooses to disobey what is true. And that begs the question, what is truth? Truth is living correct principles principles so that you can enjoy the fruits of the divine nature, the fruits of living correct principles, joy, peace, happiness, a trimmed down physique that is fit and healthy and can run and not be weary and walk and not faint, etc. So this begs the question, where do we get increase from? Increase comes from God. I love how it is expressed in the New Testament. Paul said, I have planted, Paulos watered, but God gave the increase. So then neither is he that planteth anything, either he that watereth, but God giveth the increase. So the point that I'd like to extrapolate from this is we hear thoughts or we hear ideas expressed through men. It could be an ecclesiastical leader, it could be a therapist, it could be a family member, it could be a friend, etc. They teach us some principle and we can plant that principle and live it and see what the fruits of it are. And if they're good, cleave unto it and continue living it and make that a new lifestyle. And if they're not good fruits, we learned to discuss discarded. So this process of growing is a matter of planting seeds, nurturing them, seeing what fruit comes of them. Is it a fruit of a tear that tears people down, that tears fruits down and produces nothing but weeds? Or is it a seed that grows and produces more of what it initially was planted to enable food for other people and seeds for other people to plant and for them to grow exponentially? So another point from this reference that I just read in regard to God giving the increase. Other people plant seeds in our lives, and we are the master of our ship. We determine what we allow to be planted. We can hear a thought or an idea, and we can discard it, talk to the hand, so to speak, or we can plant it and let it grow within us. So it be careful and mindful of who you listen to and what seed you allow into your heart. Because as James Allen puts it, act is the blossom of thought, and joy and suffering are its roots. So if our thought from our thoughts stem our acts and the fruits that we enjoy because of those acts, ought we not be careful what we think? And ought we not be mindful of what seeds we allow to grow within us? The answer is yes. Yes, we ought to. And when we are mindful of those seeds and those thoughts, we nourish them, the good ones, and grow from them and become better because of planting and taking care of them. Now, when we're mindful of those these thoughts that we're talking about, and our goal is to think higher thoughts, not to think men's thoughts, but to think more of God's thoughts, then we, we are careful with what we plant. And I highly recommend studying the words of Jesus Christ and living and implementing those so that you can become like him, the master of masters, the king of kings. And through living his teachings, you can learn how to become one with God. And I love what it's saying here in the next two verses, what I've read previously. Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one, and every man shall receive of his own reward according to his own labor. For we are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry. Ye are God's building. So as children of God, we have within us the divine potentiality to grow and produce fruits that lift and inspire our brothers and sisters to have a physique that is fit and glorifies God and enables us to do more and be more like him. So I love the reference that those that plant and those that water are one. When we all view God as one and are all striving as a people to be one like Christ by living his teachings, then all of us are planting and watering one another with our own individual 
unusual talents and abilities and striving for this perfection, striving for this oneness with God. And when we do that, we find the fruits of joy, peace, happiness, love, etc. So in conclusion, we'll start where we ended. The source of thoughts comes from the two different kinds of sources, the father of lies versus the father of lights even God the Father. And we have the choice to discern between one or the other and which one you allow, which of those thoughts you will allow to grow and develop further thoughts in your heart and mind. And when you turn those thoughts and allow the ideas of God to be planted in your life and turn those thoughts again to God, He gives increase. And on the contrary, when we listen to the father of lies, He takes away light and truth because of our disobedience. So we have the choice. We are the master of our ship. What thoughts will we let in? Will we let the father of all lies take light and truth from us? Or will we let the father of lights give us light and truth so that we can grow and have a healthy fit body and be full of vigor and life and be a better service to our family, to our work, to our neighbors, and to the world and bring about peace and prosperity and love and joy?